Welcome to AM Muscle Maintenance with InShape Fitness. I'm Coach Kim. Today's podcast is a workout, and I'm calling this one, What's in Your Trunk? We're going to do a few of these at the beginning here of the summer season. A lot of big, you know, goal setting and lots of, of amplified workouts based on the notion that you're going to be perhaps on a beach or at a pool or just thinking about having clothes that show the uh, the physique a little bit more. And so people end up doing a lot of crunches and a lot of burpees and a lot of things that will, ex- exercises which are great, to help slim down the trunk. But today, so today is totally focused on working the muscles that are your core. And it's not just your tummy muscles. It is actually what is inside of your of your trunk Um, and that includes everything pretty much from the shoulders down to your butt and I include butt exercises in the core work that we do because the butt is part of your your core it's the stabilizer with your pelvis of your waist and then of the area that uh, you know is above your waist, your rib cage, and all of your vital organs up to and including your chest muscles and your back, and of course, your clavicle, um, the uh, uh, shoulder girdle, and the back of your, your head, your neck. So let's do a quick postural systems check as we get started. It's about a 20-minute workout. No equipment is needed. You can take off your shoes. I don't wear shoes in my apartment in New York City, as I am sure you have, you know, if you've listened to these podcast workouts before. And I really would prefer that you not have shoes on your feet, except for the fact that at the very end, we're going to do a little bit of plyometrics just to elevate your heart rate a little bit. Most of the workout today is on the floor. But with the postural systems check, stand up really tall. And then just imagine that plumb line down the center of your body on the side of your body, the lateral part of your body. So you want to stand up real tall as though... A uh, string is tied and attached to the top of your head, and you are elongating through your rib cage, through your spine, and then make sure that you're looking straight ahead, and that your head is situated so that your ears line up vertically with your shoulders. That's the the start of the plumb line. That means that your shoulders should be back, which activates and enhances your respiratory abilities. You can take a couple of deep breaths here, inhaling deeply through your nose. And then exhaling seriously, uh, like bellowing out through your mouth, all of that carbon dioxide, the waste gases out of your body. So inhale deeply through your nose again. bellow the carbon dioxide out of your out of your mouth now think about your tummy muscles and your pelvis your pelvis often is tilted inadvertently if you sit all day so that creates a condition where your pelvis stays tilted when you stand up and when you move and guess what happens then you have then tight hip flexors and and they're weakened by not moving around very much plus you reduce the neuromuscular activation ability of the butt muscles and your butt kind of sticks out a little bit which contracts your lower back muscles so all kinds of weird things happen as a result of this seated position that we find ourselves in in modern life and the tilt of the pelvis that you know sort of two bowls side by side if you will that kind of tilt forward inadvertently uh, also disrupts your overall posture and your center of gravity so try to tuck in your tailbone a little bit and pull on your tummy muscles in order to make sure that your back is really straight and that you're fully engaged through your tummy okay now we're going to lower down to the floor as you're lowering down to the floor take a couple more deep breaths we're going to start with a couple of cat camels again now that we've sort of made our body connect to our brain just allow yourself the couple of minutes through the postural systems check to make yourself aware of 
where your body is in space. It's called proprioception. And just that awareness level and the deep breathing is an activation of your metabolism. So you're already headed in the right direction just by doing that two minutes worth of thinking about your body. Now you're going down to your hands and knees where you are situated with your shoulders directly over your hands, your wrists, and you want to open up your fingers so that and, and distribute your body weight in your hands, not just with the heel of your hand, but with the top part of your palm and your fingertips. And then your knees and your hips are also directly in line with one another. So I'm going to give you just a couple seconds to do five cat-camel combinations. The cat-camel is a really easy stretch of the spine where you drop your head like a bowling ball and you round up your spine like a scared cat. Really simple. You move slowly in each of these poses from the, from the cat to the camel. You invert your back by lifting your head and your chest and contracting your lower back. Breathe deeply in both extremes and move very slowly and just go ahead and do five of those. Take you about 30 seconds. Excellent. All right. Now, what I want you to do is juice up those tummy muscles. We're going to go right into a little intensity work here with a standard plank that we're then going to modify. We're going to do three different versions of plank over the next roughly two minutes. So the first is a standard plank. And a standard plank means that you are going to just prop your body on your elbows. Your shoulders and your elbows are a straight line. Again, very geometric here in these workouts. And then you position your legs behind you so that you're resting on the balls of your feet with your legs straight, no bend in your knee, making a straight plank from feet to your elbows or shoulders. Now, if it's too hard for you to do that, I'm going to put the clock now on for 30 seconds. Your time is going. But you can also rest your body on the bottom of your quad, the bottom of your thighs, not actually the knee bone, but the, the fleshy part of your quad because you want to keep your butt down. Once you have a bend, an angle at your hip flexors, then you're not engaging all of your trunk tissues. And I call this what's in your trunk for a very specific reason. You've got about 10 more seconds in your plank. I'm going to talk about what's in your trunk in a second. Now rest in child's pose. So you can take a, like position your body back onto your heels, drape your body over your, your trunk, over your quads, uh, and then stretch your fingers as far forward as possible. Walk your fingers away from your body. Don't let your elbows rest on the floor uh, because you want to stretch out your shoulders a little bit as well. The reason I talk about what's in your trunk uh, in a, somewhat of a cheeky way, I guess, but, but in all seriousness, it's because we've got a lot, of extra stuff in our trunks these days as a society you know I talk about this endlessly the American diet and our sedentary life habits and then our piss poor approach to sustainable exercise is really causing problems with our health outcomes in terms of the quality of our life we are actually starting to have shorter lives in many states in our country the lifespan is going down because we are not taking care of our bodies we are not taking care of ourselves in a way that's conducive with a long happy pain-free suffering-free active fun life so what's in your trunk pertains to thinking about what really you need in your trunk, your heart, your liver, your lungs, your stomach and intestines and all those working body parts that are there. And then how to live a life that doesn't produce all the extra stuff that you don't need. So let's go back to plank. 
Continue to breathe deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth. And this time we're going to go into a moving plank. Now, again, if you have been, if you, if you did the plank on your knees, that's fine. So try this though on your toes because you're going to be moving around. It's going to be hard, but if you need to stop and go back to the knee plank at any point, go for it for another 30 seconds. What I want you to do is lift up onto your feet and then lift up one leg and do kind of like a one leg out to the side, a tap of the toes out to the left and then the return to the start and then a tap of the toes out to the right. The, these are sort of like a half jacks um, where you're going to extend one leg out and then the other. If you are strong and you want to do plank jacks, which is what we call them, you're going to jump both feet out, jump both feet back in. Super cool, super respiratory inducing, aerobic in terms of the exercise um, sort of description and your time is going. You've got about 20 seconds to go. Remember, you have to keep your butt down and you really do need to keep breathing. I can't express that enough. It does sound a little silly. Remember to breathe, but it is true. You've got five second, seconds five seconds more, by the way, and uh, down to three now that I've stumbled through those words and you're done. Now rest back in child's pose. So plank jacks or half jacks by moving one leg at a time are so, so great. And guess what? Do them for, so we just did 30 seconds. We did 30 seconds of the regular plank and then I gave you a really long break. I'm going to give you probably another 15 seconds here for another break and then we're going to do another standard plank but this time with a little bit of side movement action in order to activate and get some rotational lateral movement into the uh, the plank itself. So we're going to do that for 30 seconds as well. So those are three 30 second increments. If you can do that sequence three or four times, that's almost a whole workout as far as like a daily, every day, get, you know, just get ready before you get dressed or get in the shower. Um, Rather, you can just do something to activate your metabolism rolling out of bed, rolling into the shower and like thinking that you need all that, you know, those extra five minutes of sleep is a phenomenon that is kind of hardwired into the brain. So you've got to really trick yourself into getting up early enough to get some of the, the physical work into your life that will help you. But I am telling you, the key is not getting a membership to the gym. We are failing society by telling people as medical positions all the way down into lots of big companies that you know obviously run gyms and want you to come there but it's not sustainable to tell people to that that they need to get up and leave their lives pack up a bag go to a gym twice a week and expect to achieve the health outcomes that will um, will provide them with the kind of lives that they want to live so the last plank is as i said the plank with the side action. We call them corkscrew planks. So you're going back to the regular plank and you could do this on your knees if the the plank on your toes is too hard. 30 seconds again, your time is going. You drop one uh, hip down to the side, the left hip drops to the left and then you lift back up and then the right hip drops to the right and you lift back up. Go back and forth. Your elbows can stay on the floor. However, again, if you're strong, and you want to push yourself a little bit more, you can fully rotate by lifting the left elbow off of the floor as the right hip goes down. And then likewise, lift up the right elbow as the left hip goes down and fully turn into a side plank back and forth. Very nice. All right, rest in child's pose, 30 more seconds. So as I said, plank, Plank jacks, corkscrew plank. Three versions of plank over three or four sets, 30 to 45 seconds. Maybe if you're pushing yourself, you could do a minute with, you know, five second child's pose in between. Super fun way to activate all of the layers of tissue that protect the vital organs that need to be in your trunk. You've got to have those things in your trunk. What's in your trunk? 
a lot of excess body fat, gases, and fluids, perhaps. However, the heart, the liver, the lungs, the stomach, and kidneys, and the, all the rest of your vital organs, they need to be able to function. And the layers of muscle that line your rib cage and wrap your rib cage and provide the fascia protection over the external muscles are all really, really important to protect. And this is the really just straight up best way to ensure that you are doing that through the muscular strength and the neuromuscular response ability that your body has. Okay, now I want you to turn over and lift yourself into a hip bridge. If you listen to my my podcast workouts a lot, you probably know that this is one of my favorite positions uh, for the purposes of our sedentary lives and the work that I do. Every single person I work with and down to from from kids in high school in New York City all the way up to 91 years old. My older uh, oldest client is uh, obviously he's not even retired. He still goes to an office every day, but he works and lives his life with, you know, a great deal of it, just enjoying the people that are around him. But he still needs to get around. He still needs to make sure that he is exercising a little bit every day. And the hip bridge is one of the exercises I have everyone do because it's safe. Uh, you lay on your back. You bend your knees. Your feet are, your ankles are right underneath your knees. As you lift your butt up into the air, you are elongating the hip flexors and distributing your body weight when your feet are flat on the floor in a way that allows you to build strength in the back of the leg and in your butt and then as I said before elongate those hip flexors and really focus on the strength of your lower abdominals so once you're in the position you stay here for a couple seconds and then you drop and lift lower the butt lift up you want to make sure you keep your feet down your toes have to be touching the floor in fact, if you're good at hip bridges, you already do them and you want to lift up your heels into a ballerina bridge, that is also a great idea. And the last thing I'm going to do is have you try a single leg hip bridge, something that my 91-year-old 90 90, client uh, decided to call a car jack. So the car jack is an exercise where one leg is straight up in the air, one leg is still down and your hips, your body is lowering down and lifting up with just the bent leg. Again, with the foot on the floor flat, you want to keep those toes down. You're really working the hamstring on the, the bent knee leg as well as the butt cheek on that side. In addition, if you do the same number on both sides, which you have to, you must always do that, you're helping to develop a greater sense of balance between the left leg and the right leg, which is a fundamental challenge that people have, um, not s more so with sedentary people, actually more so with relatively active people, people that strive to be somewhat fit because things like walking, jogging, cycling are activities that allow the heart, the, the dominant leg to do more work over time because the weaker leg tires out faster and needs to have that added bit of help. So for most people, it's the right leg that does more work and therefore doing the same number of uh, one leg hip bridges on the left leg is really important. Okay, last couple of exercises are going to be on your feet. I want to do a standard squat. Now, what does that have to do with your trunk? A standard squat has a great deal to do with your trunk because now that you're all jacked up in terms of the muscle tissues, the, all the soft tissues in your body being really active, we're going to get your heart rate up. The way that you get your heart rate up isn't necessarily with squats. I'm going to give you some ways to ex accelerate that, pop, that, um, that aerobic capacity if you're already relatively fit. A simple squat isn't necessarily going to do all that much, but there are some other things that we can do to make it aerobic for you. And the other thing is that if you're 
it's a safe exercise to do generally if you are relatively sedentary, being able to stand up properly using the right muscles instead of just using your back and your quads, your thigh muscles, when you position your feet correctly and you stand up straight using your butt cheeks and your core, you also interact with gravity and thus you activate your metabolism and your heart rate a little bit. So let's finish up with 20 squats where you sit into an imaginary chair without letting your knees go past the tips of your toes and then stand up by squeezing the butt cheeks and lifting up slowly until you feel your hip flexors fully elongated with your chest high, your back straight, and your tailbone continually thought about in terms of being tucked in and your belly button pulled towards your spine. So keep moving on those standard squats if you de- you do need something extra my favorite extra is a sumo squat and a sumo squat is where you lift up the body still straight still pulled in with the belly button still chest high but this time as you lift up you ex- lift up just to the side not a kick but a lift of the left leg up and out to the side without leaning too far over to the right. And then as you lower the left leg back down to the floor, you go right back into the next squat and then alternate as you come back up the next time. So you lift up the right leg, lift up the left leg, lift up the right leg. That's my favorite standard squat with a little bit of an edge. Okay, and again, it's going to elevate your heart rate. It does has the added bonus of, of also focusing on the left-right imbalances. And you get a little bit more of a lateral activation in terms of the side of the leg lifting up, which is something that helps protect your knees over time. You won't feel it very uh, with with just this workout or even just a couple of workouts. But over time, you really want to make sure that you work laterally in your lateral movements into your exercise regimens. We did that with the side planks, the corkscrew side plank when we were on the floor. And we're going to finish up actually now with some jumping jacks. So let's do 21 jumping jacks together. I don't know why I picked 21 instead of 20. But 21 jumping jacks together, if you don't like regular jumping jacks, you can do skip jacks where you lift up one knee up high towards your chest and then jump your legs out. You don't have to lift your hands up for those. Um, Some people don't like that lift of the arms up, but I love the lift of the arms up, which is why I love jumping jacks so much because, again, we're talking about the side of the body, the lateral side of your body lifting your arms up over your head and stretching your body up a little bit. These are movements that are so abnormal in day-to-day modern life. So anything that you can work in that gets the body moving in multiple dimensions, in my book, is a great way to generally boost your metabolism and your energy And then again, focusing as we were today on your core, you know, get that extra stuff out of your trunk. Listen, tomorrow I'm going to do another podcast on the In Shape Fitness Show channel. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I refer to uh, in my book that I just wrote, Darwin on the Treadmill. I refer twice to somewhat, again, I get a little cheeky when I talk about this, but about the trunk about that extra stuff that we carry around in our bodies and how damaging it is. And I draw a comparison of it to how Americans have really kind of gone over the top with buying just stuff and have all of these extra um, storage spaces that we rent now. The storage industry is a really fascinating parallel to me in terms of fitness. 
uh, in this country. And, and so I'm going to be talking about that in the uh, In Shape Fitness Show version, which is not a workout, just me talking about my book and about, uh, about exercise and the flaws in uh, the, the, the common um, sort of modern way that we look at uh, workouts and exercise with the gym. So have a great day. I will see you again soon. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me at bodybyinshape.com.